Good morning, brand DIYers. It is Mark here, and it is a beautiful Friday here in Victoria. And I am irate. I'm going nuts because I am really, really frustrated at myself and at everybody else out there because we are all, or almost all of us, making a brand DIY whoops that is so easy to avoid and yet we are virtually all of us doing it. It is, of course, testimonials. Now, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. I'm calm now. I was doing research for a client, a very, very successful client. This client's company has been growing at exponential rates. They're doing wonderful work. They have tons of customers who love them. The project that I was doing for them, I was doing research, trying to find out how to get more big corporate customers to love and choose my client. What I discovered was fairly typical. Uh, suppliers in my clients, suppliers like my client, they're a vendor to big corporations. These vendors were chosen largely based on personal relationships. Now, anybody who tells me that a B2B sale is rational, and I've heard it so many times if I had a penny for every time I heard, oh, well, B2B is different from B2C, business to business is all made by rational people. Bullshit, it is not. These relationships and these pieces of businesses are forged by personal relationships. In fact, the term that I heard the most was decisions are made on a boat over beer by a sales rep talking to the client, having beers on a boat, going fishing, forging a personal relationship. And what's particularly interesting about this is that the products that were winning with the large, large clients were technically and technologically inferior to the products that my client makes. I know, I could pull my hair out thinking about this stuff. So, once again, it came down to that old Seth Godin saying, people like us do things like this. I like fishing, you like fishing. I like beer, you like beer. I like boats, you like boats. Buy my stuff, okay. And that's how it works. Not very rational at all. So how do you fight this and how do you win? Well, in my client's case, you'd think it was easy. They are super successful. They have lots of other customers like these big corporate customers who would happily tell anyone that this product was great. Hey, you need a recommendation? I'll give you a recommendation. It's a great product. You should buy it. They were people exactly like the prospective clients. So people like us do things like this. So you got the relationship, you got the affinity, you got the similarity and values. Everything is perfect. So how do you get these existing wildly happy clients to convince new clients that you are the right choice and that you're worth trusting even if they haven't had a beer on a boat with you? Well, what's easy to do is have your existing clients write a testimonial confirming that your product is great and that you're great too. Or even better, have them record a video testimonial so that any prospective new client can see that these folks are exactly like them. Hey, that guy looks like me. He looks like a guy I'd like to have on my boat for a beer. He likes that product. Maybe I should like that product too. All right, people like us do things like this. So that was what I realized. It's that simple. I went to my client's LinkedIn profile. Why? Because if you're in a professional relationship and somebody calls you and says, 
hey, I'd like you to buy my stuff. What's the first thing you do? You check them out on LinkedIn. Are they legit or are they snake oil salespeople? So I went to my client's LinkedIn profile, CEO of a company. There were two testimonials. They were both one-liners and they were more than 10 years old. So I went to every member of their sales team's LinkedIn profile because if a salesperson calls me, I remember their name. I checked them out. None of them had testimonials on their LinkedIn page. Their website had a couple of testimonials, but again, they were one-liners. These guys are great. That doesn't tell me anything. That'll sell me chewing gum. Not a very, very technical, very, very expensive product. I need more to know that this is a person like me and that they did something like I should do. Now, why am I so, ir so irate? I'm not irate at my client. I'm irate at all of us because this seems to be the rule, not the exception with entrepreneurial clients. We all do great work, but we don't take the time or we are so racked by self doubt or shyness, or we're moving so fast that we don't bother to ask our happy clients for a testimonial. Done properly, a testimonial can be the best business development tool you have. And if your clients won't write one for you because, well, maybe they don't like to write or maybe they don't know what to write and they want to make you happy, but they don't know how and they don't have time and they've got a million things to do too. If they won't write, it's easy to write one for them. Oh, and by the way, if they won't write one because they're not happy with the job, boop, an amazing dose of self-awareness. And you know that every sale starts with no. If a client says, no, I'm not going to write you a testimonial because, well, that job didn't end as well as I thought, that opens a door for you to say, what can I possibly do better to make you wildly happy with me? Every upset client likes to hear that. All right, so I am going to highlight four issues now when it comes to getting great written testimonials. And then I am going to challenge you brand DIYers to get one into your LinkedIn profile and share it on brand DIY by Monday, because you can do this by Monday and you will thank me for it. All right. The first issue of four, you have a client who is wildly happy with your services. You say, Hey, will you write me a testimonial on LinkedIn? They say, how do I do that? Well, you go to LinkedIn, you find their profile on their profile, right at the very top, on the more info, the little wheel that says more info or more stuff, click on that. It says, ask for recommendation, click on that. And then it asks you to say, what job were you doing for them? What was your position? What was their position? And then asks you to write, Hey, will you write me a recommendation? Don't write that. What I want you to write is the testimonial that you want them to give. They can always say, no, screw you. I'll write my own fine. Or they can say, I will use half of this and the other half I'm going to improvise myself fine. But the point is you are showing them the sort of testimonial that you want. And the testimonial that you want is about this long, not one sentence. It's four paragraphs. And that leads me to the next point. First issue is I'm too lazy to write. So what you do, you write it for them. You go to LinkedIn, you type in, send me a, a recommendation and where it says, Hey, would you write me a testimonial? Put in the full content of that testimonial that you want them to write. They can 
throw it away, they can use it or they can adapt it, doesn't matter as long as they see what you want. And then they can be as lazy as they want. They can just copy it, paste it, send, done. Second issue, structure. I just finished telling you that a testimonial should be this long. How? What do you put in it? Storytelling people, storytelling. The classic structure of a story. I had a problem. I searched far and wide for a solution to this problem. Then I discovered this person who could solve the problem. It was a wild, woolly and wonderful journey with this person and the results turned out to be fantastic. You got me? That is a classic storytelling structure. I had a problem. I searched for a solution. I discovered a solution. Here's the description of the journey that we went on together. And here is the amazing result. Finish it off with, I would highly recommend this person for any client who has this, this or this issue. Done. All right. It's about four paragraphs, about a three quarter typewritten page long. And if that seems long, sit tight. Where do you want this recommendation? I just finished telling you that you want it on LinkedIn. The reason you want it long though, is that you want to use it everywhere. Once the person has written that recommendation for you, you can chop it up. I always say it's a bit like First Nations when they went hunting buffalo, they used every single last bit of that animal. I want you to use every last bit of that testimonial in different ways. Inside of that testimonial are about seven or eight different testimonials. You can chop them up and put them together in shorter form. You can put them on a colored background in Canva or even on a PowerPoint slide. And you've got a beautiful little colored piece of something, a little poster with a beautiful testimonial, their signature on it, your name and email address. Boop. Hello, Facebook. Boop. Hello, Twitter. Boop. Hello, Instagram. Off it goes. So there, that is one place where you put it. Another place where you put it, what's your best medium in the whole wide world? It is email. You send out hundreds of emails probably every day. You send those emails out to people who know you and are probably, probably moderately interested in you. What if at the bottom of your email, there was your name, your telephone number, your uh, web address, and then there was a little colored poster with this testimonial inside of it. Not only is it eye catching and different, but it reinforces that you do really, really good work and people like us like you. All right. Final place that you can put your testimonial that I can think of. I'm sure there's many more. You can put it on your website. A lot of us have testimonials on our websites and I am going to personally whack myself for this because what we should have is an entire page of testimonials, long form testimonials with little photos from LinkedIn of the person who gives the testimonial. All right. We should be able to offer up on our website, a massive amount of affirmation that we are worth trusting in the form of testimonials from credible people who like us. All right. So, that brings me to the end of my rant for Friday. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. There's one important thing. Oh, well, two other things I want to talk about. First off, if you are going to get a testimonial from someone, make sure that that testimonial is in some way relevant to the business that you're doing at this moment. It is very easy to get a testimonial from your spouse or your high school football coach or people who knew you in kindergarten saying that you're a darn swell fella. That maybe helps, but more often than not, it doesn't because it looks like you can't get a client to write a testimonial for you. 
Know that if you are hunting for a particular type of business with particular requirements, your testimonials should in some way reflect that you do really well at that very specific thing. If you go to my LinkedIn page, I like helping entrepreneurs. So the testimonials that you're going to see is that Mark is very, very good at helping entrepreneurs. There you go. Okay. Now, uh, a written testimonial, I'm going to close by saying a written testimonial is extremely important to get. And I'm challenging you to reach out to your happy clients on LinkedIn as soon as you watch this and ask them for that long form testimonial, the problem they had, the searching they did, why they, how they found you, the wild, woolly and wonderful journey of working with you, the amazing results. I would recommend this person to any client who is looking for blah, blah, blah. All right. That's the challenge to you. Get her done. Now, I didn't talk at all about the most awesome testimonial of all, the video testimonial. Turns out these testimonials are extremely easy thanks to this incredible piece of technology. However, this is not the time or the place to talk about that. It gets a little bit technical, although it's super easy. However, I'm going to invite you to reach out to me on brand DIY and ask how you can create video testimonials that absolutely crush it. And that's it for today. I hope you all have a great weekend. Be productive today. I hope all of you are making tons of dough and uh, watching your dreams come true and all that kind of stuff. And I will talk to you again on Monday.